Okay guys, welcome to the uh, review of the nervous system. I'm just going to go over um, some uh, cadaveric images of a dissection that I made over the last few weeks uh, just in relationship to the nervous system and just talk about some key points and some key plexi that we're going to go over in a bit more detail in the next few videos. So here we can see a posterior dissection. This is a disarticulation, uh, a laminectomy and a partial dis disarticulation, sorry I should say. And what we can see is as we just look in a bit closer, we can see the posterior region of the brachial plexus. So here, of course, we can have the brain and the spinal cord and the, mingine, uh, the, uh, the meningeal layers. Uh, and then this is going to be the posterior aspect of the brachial plexus. So this is going to be C5, 6, 7, 8 and T1. And you can just see here that I've just highlighted this uh, just so we can make a little bit more sense um, of the, the imaging. And as we just come down, we can see the, the spinal cord. So all of the spinous processes and the transverse processes have been removed. And then as we come down to the region of L1, we have, of course, uh, the region of the uh, conus medullaris and then the uh, cordia equina, which I've highlighted here, and then eventually down to the uh, filament terminal, the terminal filament. And then what we can just see as we go through into the deep region of the, the right buttock, we can see the rather large sciatic nerve coming down uh, down to the region of the, uh, the posterior of the thigh, and then eventually this is going to bifurcate, which we're going to look at in a bit more di uh, in, in a little bit more detail during uh, the other video of the actual dissection process itself. So I just really wanted to, to share this with you so you can kind of have a look at the overall uh, process uh, of dissection uh, in relation to the nervous system and just see how these plexi, so the lumbosacral plexus of course down in the lumbosacral region and then the very very important brachial plexus up in the upper region and it just shows uh, here the kind of delicate nature in which uh, the communication with the spinal cord within the spinal canal and the relationship within the brain, within the, uh, the, the periosteum and the cranium itself. And it's a little wonder really when we discuss things uh, such as shoulder traumas, uh, anterior and posterior traumas, such as seen with RTCs and RTAs, and also with penetrating injuries, that these plexi can be damaged. As well as things such as um, needle placement uh, damaging the sciatic nerve and following that upper right quadrant for needle placement and intramuscular uh, injections or IM injections. So just following on with the uh, previous dissection, uh, we're just looking at the cadaver now in the kind of full, uh, the full posterior figure and what I've done is I've just cleaned up a little bit more of the dissection so we can just see the sciatic nerve splitting down and then we have the tibial and fibula branch and then of course following down this posterior region uh, to the posterior lower border of the thigh and uh, I've just highlighted this all here for you in yellow uh, just so you can see the uh, transition of the nerve so overall this is quite a nice demonstration just to, to look at the uh, the entirety of the uh, central nervous system so the brain and the spinal cord and then of course the peripheral nervous system the PNS uh, formed by these uh, various plexi which we're going to look at in more detail and then of course not forgetting the various plexi that we have to the thoracic region uh, and the abdominal region as well as the rest of the extremities in more detail. So just uh, showing you here on this image we can just kind of see the transition uh, uh, in relation to the, the entirety of the body and uh, this uh, just uh, emphasizes the uh, the importance and the kind of clinical uh, understanding of where these uh, plexi run uh, and when considering things such as lower lumbar injuries, uh, region of the sacrum and the pelvis, and sacroiliac dysfunction, uh, fractures of the pelvis, and dislocations of the hip in relation to these uh, very large nerves and some of the uh, clinical complications that can come along with that. And here we can just see some of the paraspinal muscles, the erector spinae group that I've just dissected off to the side. So we're going to have spinalis longus, mesiliocostalis, multifidus, and some of the deep rotaries uh, are exposed as well as we've gone through, uh, as well as mm -hmm. here in the gluteal region, we can see part of the gluteus maximus and medius, which have just been transected through. So we can 
see the transition of the nerves in a bit more detail. Okay, so in this cross-sectional dissection that I've done, uh, I just want to emphasize the, the regions of the, the cervical region, the thoracic region, the lumbar region, the sacral region. Uh, and the purpose of this dissection is really just to look at the uh, kyphotic curvatures and the lordotic curvatures of the spine and just to kind of talk briefly about some of the pathologies that we can see uh, in, in this cadaver and some of the other pathologies that we saw in some of the other previous cadavers as well. Um, so as I discussed in my lecture on the musculoskeletal system uh, and the osteology and of the musculoskeletal system, we talked about osteoporosis and over time, of course, this osteoporosis causing uh, exaggerations of these curvatures, such as exaggeration of these kyphotic and these lordotic arches. Uh, and in this case, this cadaver actually had a very substantial amount of osteoporosis and the bones are extremely brittle. Uh, and we could actually see in the cervical region, uh, there was quite a, a lot of difference in the size uh, between the cervical vertebrae themselves and slight displacement. And I just kind of highlighted this, al although very uh, basically in this image, just to get an idea of uh, some of the variations that we can see in these curvatures. Now we're just going to look at another view. So now we have a coronal view of just uh, the head area and a dissection that I've done just uh, looking at the, the different parts of the cervical region, and you can see the atlas and the axis, the atlanto-occipital joint here. And the purpose of this dissection, as well as the, the uh, alteration in the imaging, is just to show you the close relationship of the atlanto-occipital joint and the uh, region of the brain within the periosteum and the, and, and the cranium itself. And considering uh, on imaging as well, what we look at when we look at things like the hangman's fracture uh, and upper cervical uh, injuries to the neck. And just thinking about the, the vessels or the deep vessels, the uh, deep arterial vessels within uh, this region. And also, as I discussed earlier in the uh, lecture, talking about the anterior longitudinal ligament in hyperflexion, hyperextension injuries, uh, and really just having uh, an idea of the, the very vulnerable region of the neck and how osteologically this can become very unstable in C-spine injuries. And then, of course, relating that back to the earlier dissection that we just looked at and the brachial plexus and the vulnerability of the brachial plexus in some of these injuries. Uh, so now, so in this final image, I'm just uh, looking at the cross-section of the cadaver I worked on and just trying to emphasize the here we have the cervical region and the atlas and the atlanta occipital joint and we're going to have the anterior and posterior longitudinal ligament and as I discussed the anterior longitudinal ligament uh, is torn when we see these hyper extension injuries of the neck and here we can just see the close relationship of the actual spinal cord uh, on the posterior aspect and here we would have the uh, spinous process which I haven't really highlighted in this cadaveric section. But this uh, close-up here I thought was quite a nice way of looking at the relationship of the lantern occipital joint and the atlas and the axis uh, and of course the uh, relationship to the uh, the cranium itself uh, and the, 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 uh, the region of the uh, face uh, and the palate uh, and of course just considering whiplash injuries and some of the other musculoskeletal things that we discussed during the course of the lecture.